Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another great lesson, uh, PD today, this Friday before the weekend. We're so happy to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us on uh, another great day. So we have a great uh, lesson here today, some PD to talk about how you can transform your learning by using gamification. And if you've never heard the word gamification before, it basically means adding gaming, some sort of video game type thing into your actual lesson to get kids more engaged. So we have some awesome things to show you in uh, the SLSO product from Smart that's uh, gonna, I think you're really gonna love. So before we get started, as always, just a couple of announcements. Remember that this is live and being recorded on YouTube. So keep all of that in mind. When it's over, it'll be automatically posted to our channel down below. You'll see our name, that's how you get to our channel, or you can get to it by going to our website. But while you're looking down below, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. We've hit 1.4 thousand subscribers after last session. So that's exciting to see. So we appreciate that. Uh, you can also click the bell right next to it. That'll give you an email each time we go live. So you know we have sessions going on. And even if you can't join us while we're live, you can click on that and watch the, uh, watch the session over as a replay. Um, so also you can click like down below so you can like this video. Again, everything we do is posted to our EdTech training website, edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. Um, the SLSO page is pretty robust. Um, the smart team has been keeping that up really good. Uh, they actually have some playlists where they have all of the other videos. We have, we're up to four or five now. Great videos on how you can use SLSO um, in your classroom. So if you've never used it before, there's some getting started ones. And then there are ways that you can uh, just level everything up to make it a lot better. So please be sure to check that out. This will be added to that playlist after we finish. And also don't forget, we have our topics. I'm going to get it right this time. Yep, over there is your chat box. Um, so please, we ask you, please share your ideas. Please share your thoughts. Please ask questions in the chat box. We have our minions with little wrenches uh, who are over there. We have some from the smart team, some from the ed tech team who are there to answer your questions and just spur on some ideas. We love having conversation over there. So please share your ideas because the the chat also replays on the replay. So people that are watching can actually see your ideas as well if they watch the replay. So please uh, please share in that chat box. We're appreciative of all of the people over there who are helping to keep our chat awesome. Um, so with that, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to um, two of our friends from SMART. So Laura and Ryan are gonna be running this session. Ryan is uh, one of our smart trainers. Laura is one of our smart trainers. You may recognize them from coming to your school. So with that, I'm gonna let Laura and Ryan introduce themselves and get started. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Amp Up with Gamification. My name is Ryan Roach and I'm a training specialist with SMART. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, our information is here. It will also be dropped in the chat as well, so you can feel free to email us uh, if you need anything. Thank you again for joining us. I'm also going to uh, hand it over to my colleague, Laura Von Helmont, to introduce herself. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, like Ryan said, we're both um, smart trainers for smart technologies, and we work directly with Palm Beach County teachers. Um, don't forget to follow us on our Twitter handles as well, so we can continue the conversation around learning with smart. Mm -hmm. So uh, my Twitter is smartryan33, and you can follow Laura at TechSavvyLaura. Uh, we also want to just mention, too, again, as John said, we have some of our colleagues uh, from Smart and also some other EdTech folks answering questions. So feel free to share any questions or instructional ideas in the chat, and we'll come back later and answer any of your questions as well, if you may have them. Uh, as John mentioned earlier, we have about four or five different webinars that we've done uh, over the last course of the last couple of weeks. Uh, so the one of my colleagues will be dropping the link into the chat around some of our previous webinars around Smart Learning Suite Online with uh, using your Google Drive. That's where we start. And then also integrating Google Meet and Google Classroom. So please check those out to kind of get the full impact of what we've been covering the last couple of weeks. All right, our objective today, we're going to create fun and engaging games to support virtual learning using the Smart Learning Suite online. So we're going to have a little fun today. 
All right, let's cover our agenda. So what we're gonna do first is we are gonna experience gamification. We're gonna go through a couple of games together and this is gonna be interactive. It's not gonna be all sit and get today. So I'm gonna expect for you folks to actually log in and actually uh, play some of the games or the smart activities with us. Then we're gonna go through and create two activities from scratch. We're gonna assign them to our Google Classroom. And then we're also going to introduce you to uh, Smart Exchange, which is a repository of pre created lessons. There's templates in there as well. So you're going to leave here with some great resources to, to use, especially we're coming towards the end of the year. So uh, these are some great activities that you could do, some templates that will give you to use. So that is the agenda. So next, I'm going to have you go over to and log in to. HelloSmart.com. So you're going to open up another tab and you're going to go to HelloSmart.com. You're going to join as a guest and you're going to enter the class code of 169579. My colleagues put this in the chat. So you can look over in the chat if you need as well. So you're going to go to HelloSmart.com, join as a guest, and put in the class code. 169579. And I'll see you guys starting to trickle into the class. So we have about six pre-created activities that we're going to go over today and kind of give you a little examples of how you could use them. So myself and Laura will kind of be kind of tag teaming and going and kind of giving you some examples of how you can implement these in your classroom. All right. So once again, you can go to hellosmart.com. Join as a guest, 169579. All right, so you can find this information in the chat as well. So the first one we're going to start out, we're going to start off doing a shout it out. So I'm just going to wait another few seconds or so for others to join us. So again, uh, please sign in if you haven't already. So this first one that we're going to do is a great icebreaker type of activity that we usually do when we like to go to, when we go over to the schools around the district. So again, this is going to be called a shout it out to start off. All right, so it looks like we have 17 folks logged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and press got it. And we are going to start. So I'm gonna go up to my beginning of the presentation. So first I wanna ask, we've been doing distance learning for about two months now. And um, again, none of us have expected this, but I think all of us have kind of grown in a way. Um, over the last couple months, our students, our faculty, um, and we've had to do a lot with the distribution of the Chromebooks. Again, we have students, um, you know, a lot of students are sharing Chromebooks and different things like that. But I feel like we've we've kind of all grown and hopefully we're, we're coming together. So I kind of want to start off by posing a question to everyone. How have you grown as a teacher during distance learning? Maybe you've learned some, uh, learned how to use Google Classroom. Maybe you learned how to use Google Meet or Flipgrid or any of those other instructional tools um, that the EdTech team has gone over over the last a couple of months and daily during those webinars. So as I click start here, a box is gonna pop up on your end where you can contribute either an open-ended or short answer uh, question, uh, response that will pop up on my screen. So I want you to go ahead, how have you grown during this distant learning? So you should have a box when you hit start. And then on my end, your responses will start to pop up on the screen that I can move around the screen and categorize. And I can also enlarge as well. So we have them, they're starting to trickle in. We have one on Google. Definitely it is a Google district. So we've Definitely been learning our Google applications. I've learned some new tools, which are great. As you see on here, their names are popping up as well. So Flipgrid, definitely. Awesome. So you know how to use Google Classroom, which is great. Can I was just going to pop in real quick, Ryan. Sure. I just want to let people know most people are listening, which mm -hmm. we understand, because you're listening to YouTube and you're participating in the other tab, hopefully, that's what it looks like, 
Um, but also remember you can click back into the YouTube side to see what Ryan is seeing. So you're clicking between those two tabs so you can see what the student would see and what the teacher would see. It's a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, um, I just want to let you know that you can see what Ryan is seeing if you're in the YouTube tab, but we do want you to keep in that smart tab too to play the game. So just right. explaining Thank that a little bit. Yep. Thank you. All right. So again, as you see, all of our uh, responses are up here. Here, I can move these around. This is great. So again, you have open-ended or short answer. This is great for brainstorming, questioning, review. You can also put these into categories too as you set them up. So it's great for a KWL. Um, you can compare and contrast as well here. Uh, Laura, uh, how, have you, how have you seen uh, teachers use uh, Shout It Out in the past? Um, I've seen a lot of teachers using Shout It Out for in distance learning um, as an entrance ticket or as an exit ticket. So it's a great, great way for teachers to be able to capture information on a Google Meet and grab it in and figure out what do kids know? What do they need to know more about? What questions do they have? Or even as SEL strategies, like how are you feeling today? How are things going? Um, so it's definitely one of our most popular tools that we've seen used. Thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. So definitely a good, it's great for review. And then also you can also add images here as well. So kids or students can contribute images. I just wanted to point out this little gear right here. I can see who has actually contributed here as well. And then I also gave everyone three responses. You can also turn off the names if you didn't want to see the display names. And I can also pause this activity as well. So that's great. So I can actually come back to it at a later time. I can end it as well and hit refresh. So that is a shout it out. Thank you everyone for contributing to the shout it out. Next, we're going to move down to um, the fill in the blank opportunity. So we're going to go over John F. Kennedy inaugural address fill in the blank. So I'm going to click start. You're going to click start on your end as well. So this is an opportunity where you can actually move these words to fill in here. So I'm just going to move these up and okay, so I can move these here and as you see i'm starting to uh, fill in the different quotes on here so this is really good for figurative language um character quotes and different things like that and memory uh laura have you seen how have you seen teachers implement uh the fill in the blank <laughs> Yeah, the fill in the blank has been a great tool um, to utilize with ELA um, and social studies, as you can see in this example. Um, one of the ones I like to do a lot is grammar. So being able to have some sentences where students have to figure out how to use two, 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 there, 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 or maybe um, tricky spelling words as well. Mm -hmm. um, since you're only limited to so many characters with this page, though, one of the tricks that I do is I make multiple pages of a fill in activity, um, and it really knows. Like it's a great strategy for students to know that this is a fact. This isn't your opinion. You're building this sentence, you're building this, and that is the truth. And it's not based upon what your opinion is. Um, you guys might've heard some music come in if you're playing this mm -hmm. along with Ryan. Um, just know that it's really easy to mute it um, in your tab. All you do is right click on your tab up at the top and you can mute any music that is playing. All right, so that is a fill in the blank. So that's a good example there as well. All right. So next we're gonna do a flip out. So what we did here is we did a choice board. So I'm gonna hit start on my end. So as you see, if maybe if you finish uh, reading a book with your students, they kind of get to kind of flip the classroom a little bit. We know our students learn differently. So maybe if we clicked on setting, okay? So maybe a student can draw a picture to show uh, a setting of the text, okay? I can also move these around as well. This is good for grouping. I could also add images to the front of the, you get to choose what you want on the front of the card. So maybe the character, what character do you have most in common with and why? So you can post questions to your students as well. So these can kind of move around, you can group them, you can sort them. This is good for phrases, uh, maybe classify, sort ideas and different things like that. Okay, so when you add more than 12 cards, Laura, you had mentioned if you add more than 12 cards, what happens? 
So um, if you have a lot of things that you want your students to be able to kind of learn and memorize, um, then if you add more than 12, it actually creates a discard pile for you. Um, and we have some activities we'll share at the end that uses um, discard piles. Um, and then the other way that this could be used, I'm thinking primary, like K-1-2, um, even your pre-K folks, if you're on, you can add images. So you could have on the front of the card, let's say like a picture of a cat and they're learning at. Um, and then on the back of the card is going to be the word cat. Um, or if they're learning multiplication facts or um, addition facts, it's a great way for them to be able to practice and discard the ones that they already know and continue practicing ones that they're not so sure of. Awesome. And then on the back or the front, I could up to add up to 150 characters. Right. So that is a flip out activity. So they're interactive flashcards. All right, next we're gonna move along to Monster Quiz. So if you haven't logged in already, this will probably be a good time to do that. So we're gonna introduce, we're gonna do a Monster Quiz, which um, gives you the example or the opportunity to answer multiple choice and true false questions. So I'm gonna go here, head here and actually start the class give you another moment or so to log in. So they'll drop in the chat again if you haven't had the opportunity to log in. The um, join as a guest, go to hellosmart.com and put in 169579. So they'll add that again to the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and start the class. All right, so as you can see, I have folks that are already in. So here's all my students here. So we have 18 folks that are signed in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit down here. I'm actually going to divide folks into teams. Okay, so say I want six teams. So I can move folks around. You see them coming in. I could move Tony down here. I can move Barry up here. Okay, I can move Kimberly down here. Move Carol up here okay and now i'm ready to go so there will be some questions that will appear on your screen once i hit start now you can have the questions timed for the sake of this and for timing i gave everyone 15 seconds to answer uh, each question so we're going to head go ahead and get started so i'm going to hit start quiz all right get ready and go all right, so the answer or the questions should start appearing on your screen. Uh, Laura, how have you seen um, the Monster Quiz implemented? Um, specifically with distance learning, I've seen Monster Quiz used a lot for mm -hmm. um, Google Meets because you have to do this live with your kiddos. They have to be separated into teams and they have to play. Um, I had a teacher share with me just yesterday, actually. She did multiplication facts, third grade teacher, and the kids absolutely loved it. Um, so great way to review or as maybe a pre-quiz. Um, another thing that I've seen a lot of is as an incentive. So an incentive if students are able to, you know, be able to complete all their work for a specific day or a specific topic, then they get to come in and play the quiz together. So it's kind of like a fun activity or even a fun end of the year activity. With little awesome. kids, a tip I have, Ryan, mm -hmm. is that you can actually put the questions in order and you can actually read them out to the students. So if you have anybody who's a pre-reader or you have anybody who maybe is struggling with English, um, English mm -hmm. language, you can actually read the questions to the kiddos as they're going through the game as well. Awesome. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna get a, give folks another minute or another couple of seconds or so to finish up. Looks like we have a winner here, uh, Monster Boxers. Ooh, Congratulations. And then we also have Firestormers. Let's see who's gonna come All in right. third. Yes, let's see who comes in third. All right, so yeah, this is fun to do, especially again, we're moving towards the end of the year. The students like this, or uh, maybe a lot of teachers as well, if they're doing more, putting a lot more assignments into Google Classroom, but this is maybe something fun that they could do over me to kind of come together maybe once a week to review some of the material as well. All right, great job. Great critters came in third. So just for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and end this quiz and just kind of point out another some other features here. So we, what we could do is we can go ahead and review the questions. So again, we're gonna go ahead and we could review. So overall, it gives me a class percentage of how, what the class got right. So maybe we can kind of go back and see, okay, maybe I have to kind of go back in and go over title, 
maybe go over estuary again with my students. So it gives you some data, which is really good. So it's a little data collection on the team performance and how the teams answer the questions. So it gives you the overall score here and then it kind of gives you how the teams did as well. So this is a great way to, again, review uh, with your students and to also maybe a pre-quiz or to test prior knowledge. All right, so next we're gonna move down to the label reveal. So on my end, I'm gonna hit label reveal. So what I did here is I imported an image of a map and it is the, the Great Lakes. So when I go ahead and click on these question marks, it brings me to the different lakes. And if I click on the plus sign, it gives me a little fact about Lake Michigan. So this is really good for students for vocabulary. This is a great study tool as well, maybe the processes of something. I can also add tasks down here as well. So something I'm introducing, I can actually have, I can maybe pose a question here as well instead of putting a fact for my students. So it really serves multiple purposes. This is good for diagrams, for science, uh, social studies and different things like that. Uh, Laura, how have you seen the label reveal implemented? Um, I've seen the label reveal implemented a lot with um, ELL and foreign language classes where you're able to take an image of maybe a scene like a classroom and then they're able to identify the different components of the classroom and learning about the language. Um, another way that I've seen this used actually is a CTE example in a nursing program. Um, I was working with a teacher who was able to take a picture of the heart, identify the parts of a heart, um, and then what was the purpose of that part of the heart, um, as well as doing something with the skeleton as well. So anything that you have images that you feel like you can identify different components to, mm -hmm. it's a great idea. All right. Great study tool. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. All right, and then the last one we're going to go over together is the match them up. So I'm going to click start. So with the match them up, you are matching up two things into one answer. So you have categories. You can put categories if you want or you don't have to. This supports images as well. But for this example here, we have equation and quotients. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move the example to the middle. And if I get it right, it classifies them and puts them up together. Okay, if I get it wrong, it will okay shoot it back out. So this is a good example for students to use here. Okay, so this is great for vocab, definitely good for concepts and examples, quotes, characters, and things like that. Uh, Laura, how about for a, a match them up? How have you kind of seen teachers uh, implement this around the district? So Ryan's example is kind of like a, you know, upper elementary, middle school yeah. example. Um, so a way you could implement this in primary is actually you can import images. So with match them up, you can actually have images instead of text. So maybe you're going to have them correspond to the animal name to the actual animal and they're going to connect them together. Or another idea for even higher level math is you could actually have the image of the graph. Um, so maybe there's a parabola that they're supposed to be figuring out and then the equation that connects with it. So really leveling up because you can match text to text, image to image, image to text, and that one-to-one -one correspondence is completed. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Thank you, Laura. All right, so that we went over the uh, kind of exploring. We explored six smart, uh, smart activities together. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to create, I'm going to create a couple of smart activities from scratch. Um, again, everything originates in my Google Drive. So I'm going to go over to my Google Drive. And the benefit of using your Google Drive is everything saves in your drive that you create, whether it's a lesson or as we're doing today, smart activities. Um, also, I can share it out with colleagues and also upload it into my Google Classroom. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna create and then assign it to the classroom. So when we're in our drive, we're gonna go here to new, more smart learning suite. So some of my colleagues will be dropping that into the chat as well. So again, it is new, more smart learning suite. Okay, once we do that, this is will, our, will be our ability to start creating. And we come out to what we like to call your choose your own adventure board.
We did a shout it out earlier today, so that's kind of standalone over here. It is considered a smart activity, but for the two that we're gonna create today, it's gonna be found under game-based activity. So there are lemon pre-created templates that we're gonna use, and we're gonna actually do, I'm gonna start off with a super sort. And real quick, Ryan, mm -hmm. um, if you guys are still on the SLSO tab, you can go ahead and close that tab for now, and you're gonna come back over to the YouTube live page in order to see Ryan's demo. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. All right, so what we're gonna do here is again, we're gonna do a super sort. So this, these are all our 11 pre-created game-based activity templates. I can click on this little magnifying glass and it gives me a little preview of the game. So with the super sort, this really helps students sort two items into uh, categories. So this really helps with classification and grouping logical thinking. So we're gonna select this activity here, okay? And we're gonna actually, uh, do nouns and verbs. So we're going to sort nouns and verbs together. Okay. And again, this supports images, but for the fact of time, we're just going to do text. Okay. Boy. And we'll put it here. okay. And then we're going to implement our, you can also cut and paste these as well. Okay. All right, so I'm going to hit next, and then it gives me some templates that I could use. So I have a dragon, a garden, just a couple of jungle themes. I'm going to use the pirate theme. Okay, I'm going to go with pirate. So I'm going to select pirate, and then I'm going to go here to finish. Okay, so now this is setting up uh, my activity. Again, with the super sort, you're this is great for classification and grouping. Uh, Laura, how have you seen the super sort used for, for teachers? Yeah, super sort is actually one of our more popular activities um, where you're able to take those items and the, you're able to sort them into the two buckets. Uh -huh. um, so I'm thinking like colors, primary versus secondary, two buckets, coins mm -hmm. greater than a dollar, dollars more than a dollar, sizes of objects, shapes, hot versus cold, um, there's so many different ways that you could use a super sort activity. Awesome. So what I'm going to do first before I start, I'm going to actually, I'm going to come up here and I'm actually going to give this a title. So I'm going to do nouns and verbs. I'm actually going to put today's date. Right. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add my rank order. I can also go over here and I can also give this a title as well. So I could do verbs and nouns, super sort. I'm gonna come down here, click the plus sign, go back over here to game-based activities. Now I'm gonna choose a rank order. Again, this gives you a little preview of the rank order. So students, you're arranging items in order, okay? So this strengths, this is definitely good for sequencing. So I'm gonna select this activity and we're gonna make our ranked order. So down here, I can click, so the, this could be maybe biggest and smallest. So I'm just going to do um, the nouns in order. So I'm going to click A and Z. So from A to Z, they're going to put these in alphabetical order. So I'm going to put actor. There, okay. There. Boy. And okay, I'm gonna hit next. And you all can see here too, the check answers. So instantly, if the student gets it wrong, it kind of shoots it right back out. When prompted, it lets the students move all of the examples before checking. Or another example of uh, we've done a few times is called rank and defend. So that is where you can, um, put on don't check the answers and have the actual students maybe uh, what character had the most impact in the story. Or um, we did a couple of social studies examples of maybe what act in American history had the most impact on you know World War II or um, civil rights or anything like that. So you can, this is really good for maybe a rank and defend as well. But we're gonna just kind of do a simple uh, A to Z alphabetical order example. I'm gonna hit next. And again, it kind of chooses my themes. I can do underwater, science, monsters. We're gonna do the garden theme. So I'm gonna hit finish editing. And again, I could name this if I want as well. So we're gonna do nouns rank order. It allows me to preview as well. So I could move these 
here. And I could preview those. I'm going to hit out of here. Okay, now I'm just going to hit finish editing. Before I do that, uh, Laura, how have you uh, seen the rank order implemented? Um, I've seen the rank order implemented. A lot of things, just whatever has to come into an order. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. um, story structure was a great example. Parts of a book from the front cover to the back cover and what order do they come in. Mm -hmm. um, another cool thing is you can also include images. So maybe it's um, the starting point of the life cycle of the butterfly until the butterfly becomes an actual butterfly. Um, and then really popular, especially in middle school, is the rank and defend. It's been in social studies classes, mm -hmm. high school government classes, um, like figuring out why. I have a great geography example we've been using recently around landforms, and it actually ties into Minecraft a little bit if you're mm -hmm. doing Minecraft for EDU. Um, so if you had to live on a specific landform, which would be the easiest and the hardest and why? And so the kids would put it in a specific order, like, I think it's a glacier, this is why, or I think an island, and this is why. Um, so it's kind of cool to do those rank and defends where they actually have to give rationale as to the reasons of what they put in a specific order. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. So I'm going to go ahead and hit finish editing here. So we set up the two games, two activities. I'm going to go here to finish and I can click out of it now. So again, we went to our drive. So here is my file here. So I'm going to go and put this into my Google Classroom. So I'm going to go over to my classroom. I'm going to go here to create the assignment. All right, and I can give this a title, so nouns and verbs. I can give my students some instructions on, so please complete the blank order and super sort. Okay, now I'm gonna add it to my classroom. I'm gonna hit add. I'm gonna go here to Google Drive. So again, we just made this one here. So, but if you made it yesterday or a couple of days ago, you can also search in your drive for the actual file that you made, but we just made this together. So here's my example. I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna add it to my classroom. Um, again, a couple of the other examples, what we did before, you can also add into this here. So you don't have to just do the uh, SLSO file. You can add other things here. You can add in a doc. Uh, as Laura said, you could do like the rank and defend and things like that as well. So you can add in more elements to the actual Smart Learning Suite uh, file as well. So here you have your options if you want to grade it or not. So I'm just going to have it ungraded. And I'm going to come over here and actually assign it to my students. Okay. So it is here. Okay. And what I do is I'm going to go to view assignments and I'm going to go to instructions so the actual student can go in and see the actual file. If I click on it, there'll be a couple of different clicks. So they'll have to just click on open with the smart learning suite and they will be able to sign in with Google and they'll get access to the actual file. Okay, and then they get to actually play the game. And a cool thing, Ryan, with this mm -hmm. is that the students actually don't need to install any additional software. So it's built in. So students could play this on a phone, it could be on a tablet, it could be on a computer, um, and no extra software is required. They just have mm -hmm. that one extra click and then they're into the games playing away. Excellent. Thank you. So again, you can kind of have it on student pacing so they can go ahead and do this at their own pace. All right. So we're going to come back over and recap what we went over. So I'm going to click on the next. So I just wanted to kind of point out here that some of the games that we created today are you can run uh, all of the smart activities using Google Meet in live sessions. There are some that are teacher initiated. We went over two today, the monster quiz, the shout it out, a smart response. These are teacher initiated, meaning the students really can't access these unless the teacher is running the lesson live with the student. So on the left-hand side here, you have the student-led ones. These are the ones that you, we encourage you to put in the Google Classroom. We did the rank order and we did a super sort, but these are some other ones that you could use as well. There's a couple, uh, the speed it up in the game show, need a partner to do, so you don't really get the full impact of uh, those games. So what we'd like 
So you can go ahead and take a look at this. This file will be shared with you. So these are some kind of best practices for distance learning tips. All right, next we have a uh, repository of or what we like to call the smart exchange. So these are some links that will link out to some great things that you could do because we're coming to the end of the school year, um, making words or uh, zoology, animal research. We have some fine arts examples as well, some bingo, some graphic organizers here for the secondary, some um, STEM questions as well, some distance learning math lessons. So if I click up here to smart exchange, Okay, this is going to link me out so I can see what's new here with the Smart Exchange as well. Okay, so I'm in my Smart Exchange, so that just gives you a little preview. Okay, here. So if I'm on the Smart Exchange, I can search for maybe cycle of plants. So these are full-fledged lessons that are already created that you can kind of make into your own. I can also minimize my search as well, and I can come over here and search for activities. Okay, so I can search activities. Here's an activity here, so plant life cycle, um, a match em up game here as well. Uh, Laura, how have you uh, kind of seen, a lot of teachers have been using uh, Smart Exchange. Are there any other things that they can kind of find on the, on the exchange that you want to share or add? Yeah. Um, the Smart Exchange um, not only has just the games that we've gone over today, but there's tons of other additional lesson resources, um, classroom management tools, end-to-end -to -end lessons and activities, as well as um, there's some cool different um, posts that come in there about featured. So um, the section on featured, like, is probably going to have stuff about, like, grilling and holidays and summer fun um, coming in there soon. So just always can go back and check because there's always mm -hmm. something new in the Smart Exchange. Definitely. Thank you, Laura. So that yeah. is Smart Exchange. All right, so game on. So again, what we talked a little bit about to quickly recap. So again, everything kind of starts in your drive. So we want to go to new, more smart learning suite. That's where we're always going to start. So everything kind of saves in your drive. You're able to share things out with colleagues. You're able to easily put it into your Google Classroom. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to share those things with us. So again, there's more resources for you here. And then also please share uh, in either the Google Plus community or Twitter community as well. So I know a lot of us are active on Twitter. So my colleagues will be dropping this information into the chat as well, the Google Plus community, and then also um, the Twitter information as well. All right, any questions? Awesome. Thanks so much, Ryan. We're going to uh, allow the questions to come in as uh, as we review a couple of things. Um, there is one question. I don't know if an answer has come up yet. Is there a limit to the number of students who can be in a game? Great question. We actually, I got the answer yesterday. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, for a monster quiz, that's usually the most popular. You can have more than 100, but once you hit about 100 students, it does start to slow down a little bit. But okay, that's good to pretty know. Good. <laughs> yeah, a hundred is pretty, pr pretty big, uh, pretty group, big group of kids. So, yeah. um, so if there are any other questions, please feel free to to ask them in the chat over there. Um, while we finish up right now uh, with just a couple more housekeeping things, we'll keep an eye on that chat box. Um, so one thing that we announced again um, in the last session, if you were here. We are going to be holding a remote digital learning institute, and uh, SMART is going to be doing one of the sessions there as well. That's going to be June 9th and 10th. We're going to be doing literally two days where each hour we will be doing a different live stream, and we've got some amazing people who a lot of them you haven't heard yet if you've been following our channel. We're really trying to bring in some experts from around the country that are uh, really great at ed tech and we hope for it to be an inspiring day. That's part of the goal is to inspire you as we leave for summer and to give you guys some extra ideas. So please join us. Registration opened literally this morning and we've already had a couple, a handful of people join us from the morning session. Um, you register at that bit.ly, it's bit.ly slash remote institute. And you just have to make sure the R and the I are actually capitalized. Um, and you can also get 10 in-service points per day. So a total of 20 points. If you need some points, we'll be able to give that to you as well. So uh, we can't wait to share some of the awesome ideas we have with you. Um, 
we have a crazy week next week. Um, we're going to be doing live sessions Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we have three sessions on each one of those days. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So starting on Monday, we're going to be doing Microsoft Sway, which is a really cool tool that you can use to to build almost like website looking things. It's similar to Spark, but it's got a great, uh, it, it's got some great tools. Um, Tanya Averith is gonna be back at 11.30 on Monday to teach us Spark again. And we're gonna talk about code.org at 2.30 on Monday. On Wednesday, we're gonna have another lessons learned panel like we had this past Wednesday with, with four fresh teachers who are gonna share things that they've learned throughout um, the past six, seven weeks. Our friends from Smart are coming back at 11.30 on Wednesday to share some more great ideas. And then at 2 o'clock on Wednesday, we're going to bring in our physical education department, and they're going to share some ways on how we can disconnect and get active. Um, so I think that's going to be a great session uh, as we start winding down here on how just some ideas on what you can do to be active during this time. Again, um, oh, I lied. This is the wrong slide. Uh, starting May 18th, look, I can edit on the fly. Ready? This is May 18th. Um, we're going to be doing virtual learning experiences, and these are going to be designed for your students. So we're going to be doing things like having people come in and talk about their career. So we have someone from Google who's going to come in and talk about what it's like to work at Google. We have someone who's a DJ in New York City who's going to talk about um, what it's like to be a DJ. We have uh, former vice presidents who worked at Walt Disney World. They were executives at Disney World in Orlando, and they're going to share their career stories. We also have field trips to the Science Museum and all kinds of other places as well. And again, we're going to be asking you, the teachers, to share these links in your Google Classrooms to have students watch these live streams. The goal is going to be to give students the opportunity to go on field trips because technically we haven't been able to do that this year. Um, so that's going to be uh, what we're going to be doing that la uh, the last two weeks of May. And then as always, our assistance form is available. Um, I can't thank our smart people enough for, for taking hold of this form. Um, and helping out the ed tech team. We would never be able to answer all the questions without them. So we thank you for that. So if you do have questions, don't hesitate to fill out that form and, and they will hop on a Google Meet with you and solve your problems one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so we do appreciate you guys as well. So with that, I'm gonna leave it to Ryan and Laura to say a few last words before we end our session today. All right, thank you, John. Um, again, everyone, thank you for joining us. And then again, as John mentioned, uh, we're here for you to kind of help with any of those um, with Smart Learning Suite Online or helping with any of the you know Google for Education uh, elements. So please feel free to uh, reach out. We know there's a few more weeks left of school, so we're definitely willing to kind of hop on a meet with any of you uh, to help as any in any way we can. Uh, Laura, did you want to add anything else? No. Yeah. Just thank everybody so much for joining us today. Um, go check out, I'm going to do what John does, at checktrainingpalmbeachschools.org. Um, and you'll find all of our follow-up resources for SMART, as well as all the awesome other resources that EdTech has um, curated over the last uh, month and a half or so. Um, so I hope everybody has a great, fabulous Friday. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody.